chapter it says, in thir verse 13 it says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore, hence, henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and trotted under the foot. So God has let us know that therefore we are in, we got to realize that we are people of God, that we're supposed to be salty. One thing about salty stuff, it makes you very thirsty. When, when, when you eat a lot of popcorn with salt on it or eat a lot of peanuts with salt on it, what it does, it have a tendency of making you want to get some water or soda to help wash it down because you got to get that salt taste out of your mouth. One thing about it, if you eat it, it can be hours later and you'll find yourself to be awful thirsty because the salt is still pulling at you to tell you you got to quench this thirst. You'll be, you can wake up with this taste in your mouth because you've got to get it out because it's the salt that you ate earlier. The thing what I'm trying to get you to see, if you are salty, folks can't hang around you and not want to know about the Jesus that's in you. How, how can it that people can hang around you and never feel no conviction, never feel like even they got to change, will never feel that they, you know, you know, you should make some folks uncomfortable around you because you don't do the same thing that they do. If, if, if the sinner can hang out with me 24-7 and never feel nothing, something wrong with my soul. Because one thing about salt, everything has an expiration date on it. And see, you can have salt stored up in the cabinet, but if it goes past its expiration date, it's no good. I don't care how much you put it on your, put it on your food, it'll never change the taste of it because it's lost its power. See, the devil really don't care that you sit up in church. He don't care that you come to church. He don't care if you're on the minister board, sing on the praise team. He don't care what your position and your title is. He don't care if you hear it 20, every Sunday of the year. As long as you have no saltness, no power, no flavor, he can care less. We got a lot of folks fooled and think that I'm all right, I'm at church, but I have no productiveness in me. I'm not being productive. I have no, no, no salt, no savior. I'm not drawing anybody. I'm not reaching anybody. I'm in church, but I'm just functioning. Because when the salt loses power, it is good for nothing. It, it ain't no good. All you can do is just throw it out. Because it's expired. Well, what has happened is some of us are still trying to function off of the joy we got when we first got saved. But we never came back to get no more joy. And the expiration date is over with. So now it's not the joy of my salvation, it's just my salvation. I'm saved. We, we're going out the premises, I'm saved, but where, but where is my joy in my salvation? Why am I not excited about God? Why am I not excited about the things of God? Why am I not excited about church? When they can take and leave church, something wrong with your soul. You know, well, I got something else to do this Sunday. Something wrong with your soul. Because when you first got saved, the doors wasn't open enough. You didn't have enough services. It was not enough prayer time. It was not enough fasting. It was, you, just, you didn't have enough Bible study. But all of a sudden, because life started beating down on you, you went, went past your expiration date. You didn't come and get filled up again. All right, all right, teacher, teacher. So now all of the salt in the flavor that you have is soon gone. Because when life starts coming, when you get in the war, Oh, your salt loses power. See, you've got to understand that, see, the, see, the devil really don't care about, amen, how you look at me because you're in church. He wants to know, are you, see, because the thing is, this is the myth. We got, we got a strong spirit of re religiosity that's going on. Yeah. Folks just go to church, but there's no church in them. Yeah. They go through the rituals, for the Bible says they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Because if church is in me, I'm going to act like church when I leave church. See, we, we, we go to church on Sunday for those few hours, but after that we live like the devil. Because there's no soul. See, one thing. 
thing about salt, salt comes to preserve you. That's when you, you know, you know when folks salt is getting weak because they start talking crazy. Because when trials start coming, they start talking to God crazy. God, if you don't do nothing, I ain't going to church no more. God, you better show up. If you don't show up, see, you lost your salt. You have nothing to preserve you. Because when, when the trials come, your salt will hold you in place. You'll do like Job, though you slay me, yet will I serve you. It really doesn't matter what I'm looking at right now. I just know my God's going to make a way out of no way. It might look dark and clear now, but I know God is going to bring out. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear no evil while my salt is holding me. But when the salt has lost its power, amen, then you'll go do anything to pacify the need of the moment. Oh, my God. That's why a man can't stay with his wife. He got to go outside of his marriage and have extra relationship because he says she don't do it for him. You know why? His salt can't hold it. Oh, let me move on. I got to move somewhere else. Look, look what it goes on. In verse number four, it says, And ye are the light of the world. Uh -oh. A city that's set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Your job is to bring forth light. See, you're supposed to be the light to the dying world. You're supposed to be the example. The Bible says you're supposed to be a written epistle, read and known by all men. In other words, some people will never see God until they look at your life. Because they don't go to church. And you, you meet them on your job and because they're your co-workers and they don't go to church. The only And you said that you was a Christian. The only Bible they get is, or the only God that they get is you. But if your light is under the candle, it's up under a bushel trying to hide it, then what light do they got to come out of the darkness that they in? Because without light, amen, there's no direction. All right, let me help you. I got to get you there. So, so the thing you got to understand is that sometimes you can have too much salt or too much light. Or you can have not enough light or not enough salt. Let me help you. Have you ever tasted somebody's food that is over salted? They got a heavy hand on the salt. The type of people, they just, when they buy, they order their food, they never taste it, they start putting the salt on. They don't never taste it, they start putting salt on. How, did you taste it? They don't, it's, they can't see the salt, it ain't enough. And then you taste, are you going, are you going buy some french fries somewhere and it, and it seemed like the salt shaker top came off on your, on your order and you taste it and you're like, it, because the salt is so strong, you cannot taste the flavor of what it's on because it becomes overpowering. So what they got to do when they think, sometimes we are unbalanced in our walk with God. Sometimes we're so spiritual that we have no earthly good to us. Oh, God. They, they, nobody can see nothing else. They can't see nothing. They can't see Jesus because you're so spiritual that you can't even talk to him on a natural level. You become so spooky to them, they be like, I don't want that Jesus stuff. Sometimes we become too, we become irrational because we become too spiritual because we're not balanced. Sometimes some things are just common sense. You don't need to go ask God and go on a three-day fast to get an answer. Just go put some gas in the car. That's all you gotta do. Amen. They don't need to go have a conference in the telephone come. Go pray with me. I don't need to know if I should put this kind of gas. No, some things are just not spiritual. Just gotta have some balance. Sometimes when you got too much salt, it ain't good. <laughs> then you can have, have you ever take somebody's food that when you eat it, you'd be like, are you going to like a buffet? And you get this, like, this stuff ain't got no salt in it at all. It's under salt. They too carnal. They so carnal that they have no spirituality in them. They start saying stuff like this. I don't see no problem of doing that. The Bible didn't say, the Bible says, Timothy said, Paul told Timothy a little wine for the stomach is okay. Your name ain't Timothy. <laughs> the Bible was written to the people of the time of that time. Oh God, let me help you. And because I'm not Timothy, that was born back in that century, then he ain't talking to me. But see, that was good for some mistake at that time. But see, but we got Pepto Bismol, we got Alka Seltzer Plus, and we, we got stuff for that now. 
That's why you've got to be connected with the Holy Ghost because it is the power of God. See, a lot of us is trying to operate in the fivefold ministry. We try to operate in the spiritual gifts with no spirit. We try to lay hands on sick folks and we ain't got no power because we ain't got the wind ain't blowing. You gotta understand unless the wind is blowing, unless the spirit of God is is matriculating into my life, it can't it can't produce the power I need. So that's why I can't go lay hands on the sick. It ain't no power. Trying to walk in the prophetic, trying to walk in the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, can't walk in it without the Holy Ghost. Why? Because I don't have a power source. I've got the, I got, I'm the potential to be a light, but if I don't have no power, the light will never come on. He said you're the light of the world, but you've got to have something to back you up to make you the light. Then, then after God blinded him, he had scales. And it wasn't until the scales came off that he was able to see Jesus for who he was. See, you cannot see God for who he is until the scales fall off. And so therefore, God has to enlighten you. And when God enlightens you, what happens is you are able to see God for who he is. You can never figure out God on the outside trying to look in. That's why church don't mean nothing to you. It don't make any sense to you. It's because you haven't been connected to the light yet. But once you get connected to the light and the light comes on, your perspective change. See, it's, you know, I was, see, they, they, they would call me a good at two shoes. When I was raised, when I was coming up, I never cussed. I never drank. I never got high. And I was raised in Compton. I was raised right in the hood. I was raised where they birthed the Crips in the bloods. I mean, I, I, I was down. I lived on the Crip side. Uh huh. I, I, we had a dope house down the street. Uh huh. We which 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 went, went on for thirty years. That that was that was the dope house on that for thirty years. Folk old folks walking down the street going to get their crack and dope. See, I was raised in that environment, but I never became a part of that environment. But yet I still didn't see life right until I met him. Once God saved me, then I, I seen life different because now I was seeing either the things that I didn't do, but all the things that I did do, I see that man. I needed to be saved. I couldn't see what I was doing was wrong until God saved me. The light had to cut on. Because when he comes, he comes to pull you out of darkness. But you can never get out of darkness unless you got a light to lead you out. That's why folks are stuck because they're trying to play with God instead of getting to the light and coming to know him. And once they know him, he'll draw them out of darkness. That's why you don't feel like what you're doing is wrong because the light ain't been shined yet. But once the light is shined, you'll come out of that. You'll see really what it is. You'll see what the devil's trying to do to you once he turns on the light. He says he came and he gave light. And no matter, no darkness. Now, this is, let me help you out. All the devil is trying to do is put out your light. Those who do know him, all the devil do, every trial, every test, every bill, everything that comes up against your life, only come into trying to put a dimmer switch on your light. He's trying to take out or stuff you out. He's trying to distinguish the light. He's trying to put the light out. He's trying to suffocate the light. Because see, when to have light, you gotta have oxygen. If no oxygen, then the light won't, you ain't hear me. So God, he's trying to suffocate you to take life out of you. Because he can take the light out of you, he'll take the light out of you. But tell your neighbor, he can't put my light out. You gotta understand that you cannot let God put out your light. But why God allowed me to go through what I go through? I'm glad you asked. Look at verse six. God sent John the Baptist to tell everyone about the light. He didn't see God sent John the Baptist to be a witness to the light. Look what he goes on to say, so that everyone might believe because of the testimony. God let you go through things because God has given you a testimony so that you can be a light to folks who's in the same thing that he brought you out of. The reason why God let you experience the things that you experience at the time it doesn't make sense. At the time it don't, it don't feel good, but that's why he said all things work together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose because when God said, when I get through skilling you, and when I get through delivering you, when I get through setting you free, and when I get through turning the thing around, your life is going to become a testimony to those who are in the same predicament that you was in, and they going to know that my God, that I am a God that can still save, and I'm a God that can still turn it around, I'm a God that can still heal from cancer, I'm a God that can still bring you out of, even out of life, amen, I'm a God who can still provide for you when you ain't got no job, I'm the God that can make a way out of no way, I'm the God that can change the situation, I'm God can turn it around. I'm the God that can make a, amen, a, a river in the desert. I'm the God that amen, can bring every mountain low and exalt every valley. I'm the God. So God said, I'm just giving you, sending you up for a testimony. 
testimony. I'm getting you in a position so I can give you a testimony because you got to bear witness to the life. I was bound and down in darkness until the light came. And so God has to let you go through some things in order to give you a testimony so you can testify to the greater light, which is him. So God is going to let you experience some things because he wants to show you that his light got power to bring you out of what you're going through. Oh, look at it. You can be in, around the power source, but until you receive him, you don't flip the switch on. He gave them power. Now look at the testimony. He's giving me power. He gave them power. See, see the thing is, whenever we receive the Lord, what happens, we, what happens, we get reborn. That's why it's called being born again. Because when we're born, we're born in the iniquity and we shaped in sin. So what God has to do, he has to say, look, you got to be born again. Yeah. Nicodemus says, Lord, how can I be? Hey, Nicodemus came to him and said, Lord, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, you got to be born again. So Nicodemus tried to play on words. He said, well, then how can I go in my mother's womb and say, at the time I'm old. He said, Nicodemus, unless you're born of the spirit and of the water, he said, then you cannot you cannot receive me. You cannot enter in. He, what, the thing is, water here is not talking about water back. It's not talking about what it's not talking about water baptism. It's talking about natural birth. He said you've got to be born naturally first before you can be born again. Let me help you. I You've been taught that you have to be baptized. That's not what it's talking about. Nicodemus is already born. To be reborn, that means you got to be born first. He was talking about natural birth. Water represents the womb. So he says, until you're born, now you become a candidate to be reborn. Because now you've got to be born spiritually. And so when you become born spiritually, what happens? What happens through faith, Christ gives you the new birth that changes us from the inside out. He'll rearrange some things in our life. He'll rearrange our attitude. He'll rearrange our desires. He'll rearrange our motives. And since my motives haven't changed, that means he haven't got inside yet. See, the thing, the problem is that God comes in to rearrange our life, but then because we like to, we, because we ain't giving him control yet, we go back and put the furniture back the way we like it. And so now we get back our attitude again. We get back our motives again. See, because the thing is, when God trying to straighten us up, we go back and rearrange raise the furnace because I don't like it like that. And so because you don't like it like that, you been undo everything that God did for you. Yeah, yeah. Take He's trying to rearrange your life, but you're too busy putting everything back in the way you had it. But the way you had it didn't work. The way you had it was messing up. The way you had it every night when you go get your water, you bump with your foot. He's trying to move the furniture out the way, give you a better flow. But you're too busy said, I don't like it. I don't like that color scheme. I don't like the picture on that wall. I want it on this wall. I don't want the table here. I want it there. And God said, but you need to change that because your attitude is messed up. Until you can move your attitude to here. You get it off of bad onto good, then you won't still be jacking up. So God said, I'm just trying to rearrange some stuff. Because God never works outside in. He works inside out. See, the thing is, I'll never get you to where, you'll never get where God needs you to get until you make a heart change. I don't care how you dress on the outside, your heart's still wrong. You can dress it up, but it's still the same. Huh? Huh? You can dress up a lie, he's still gonna lie. But if you can change his heart, he'll stop lying. Oh, right, let me move on. See, the thing is, being born makes you physically alive and it puts you into a family. That's natural birth. But when you get born again, he makes you alive to the spiritual things and puts you into the family of God. So therefore, how can I function like my brother Jesus until I get in the family? The light got to come on. I can't, that's why you can, you can, you can act like them, but you step your stepchild. Mm. Mm. Know how your stepchild? Because when they ask you to do something, you start screaming, screaming and hollering. Huh? You, you throw a trump card, you, when, you, when God tells you to do something, you did, you start acting like the stepchild. You ain't my daddy. I ain't got to do that. You tell off on yourself. Well, let me move on. I don't know how you got there. See, the thing you've got to understand is that God is trying to get us to a place that he's trying to bring us into sonship. 
allow your light to go out. That's why the enemy is fighting you, attacking you, coming after you. Because if he can put your light out, he'll stop your ministry. If he can put your light out, he'll stop your faith. If he can put your light out, he'll stop you from going forward. If he can put your light out, you'll start getting depressed. If he can put your light out, he'll stop you from doing ministry. And see, this is all the devil wants you to do. He don't care nothing about you being here, as long as you ain't producing nothing, as long as you ain't doing ministry. What good is it to be able to have a title and you never operated and never functioning? What good is it if nobody can't get saved from the recording that God gave you? God saved you and filled you with the Holy Ghost, but you can't get nobody saved. So the devil's like, I got you right where I want you. You ain't got no power. You ain't got no light going on. You ain't got no flavor because of the fact that I got you just where I want you at. I don't care about where you look and what you got, but are you functioning? Move on. Look at Romans, Romans 8. Romans 8, and I'm closing it here. He goes on and says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? He goes on and he brings it to the point. And this is what is happening to the body. All the devil is doing, he's, the Bible says nothing new under the sun. And so what he's doing, he's doing the same old thing to keep you so frustrated, off balance, off tilt, keep your mind preoccupied with everything but God. And so therefore you can't move where God wants you to move. He can't lead you where, you, he, can't lead you where he wants to lead you. It's simply because your mind is all discombobulated with other stuff. And that's why God told you up front. He said, don't, he said, he said look, I want you to be mindful of one thing. He said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear first. And the thing is, we do, we worry about everything but the kingdom. And kingdom comes secondary, third dairy, and maybe next year. But you got to understand, that's why we can't go nowhere in God because we're losing focus. But Romans says, who can, can anything separate us from Christ's love? He said, now what's going to separate us from his love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble? Or calamity? He said, because trouble come in your life, does that mean that God don't love you no more? Because calamity comes in your life, does that mean that God don't love you no more? He goes on to say it like this. He says, he goes on to say it. He says, does it mean um, that he no longer loves you because you have trouble, calamities, or persecution? God, I don't know why all this is coming up against me. I'm your child. He said, that don't mean I don't love you because it's coming. Paul said, I'm pressed hard, pressed on every side. Trouble's on every hand. He said, but I'm still, even I, I'm still not going to be crushed. I'm still not going to be destroyed. I'm still not going to be cast down. You've got to understand, are you hungry or cold? I mean, I don't love you because you're being threatened with death. He didn't say that you were going to die. He just said you just threatened with death. That's why you gotta, since we, we, we gotta understand, we gotta re understand what we're reading. When the Bible says me, when the Bible says that, and he, said, he, talk, he talks about, he says, no weapon form, that means it's coming. It might be close enough for you to even breathe on it and see your fall going in. He just said, it, 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 it's forming against you, but it can't prosper against you. And this is what you gotta understand. Even God said, I, mean, I still love it because I didn't let it destroy you. I still love it because I didn't let it take you out. But God, they, they, they did this to me, but you're still breathing, you're still living, you're still going. No, they do me wrong on the job. That's all right, but you're still eating. You still got a roof over your head. You gotta understand what God is doing in your life. Amen. That don't mean that He don't love you. I'm cold, God. That's all right. He said, but I still love you. I'm hungry, but I still love you. I'm threatened by danger, but I still love you. He said, even the scripture says, he said, for your sake, we are killed all the day long, and we are being slaughtered like sheep. But he says, no. He says, no. None of that's going to separate us. Despite of all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Jesus Christ, who loves us. Verse 38 says, and I am convinced that nothing can never separate us from his love. Death can't. Then he goes say life can't because sometimes life just get life just becomes life and sometimes life becomes unbearable. And sometimes life becomes what blows your mind and I just don't understand God, but it's just life. Sometimes life will bring some unexpected things in you. Sometimes life will throw some things in your face that Lord, I didn't sign up for this, but that's just life. He says, but it can't even take us out. He says angels can't. He says demons can't. He says fears for the day came. Worries about tomorrow came. Yeah. Even the power of hell came. Yeah. God loves always. In other words, no matter what you face in life, yeah. God still loves you. He ain't forgot about you. He didn't kick you to the car. He's not going to lead you by yourself. He still loves you. He's still going to protect you. He's still going to provide for you. He's still going to make a way out of nowhere. He's still going to bless you. He's still going to turn the thing around. He's still going to bless you like he said. He's 
remember what it goes to say. Whether we are high above the sky or deep on, in the ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. Reason why you don't, you're not convinced because you got to get in Christ to be revealed. When I get closer to him, he reveals more to me. Let me prove it to you. You got some people that you know and you got some that you say, that's my best friend. The people you know don't know everything about you. But your best friend, you tell them something that nobody else knows. Because the closer you get, the more you reveal to them. And God says, when you get closer to me, I reveal more to you. Lord, why are you taking me through and why I'm going through? I'm trying to reveal something to you. God, why I'm going through this? Because I'm trying to show you another power, another avenue of my power. You said you wanted to see me work, so I put you in a situation so you can see me work. Didn't he say he will prepare a table in the midst of your enemies? He said, I'm going to give you front row seat on this one. I'm going to put you right there and let you look at the enemy to attack you. Look at the motion preacher going for. He said, sit there and eat. The reason why he wants you to eat, because when you eat, you can't talk with your mouth full, so you can't complain. You can't say, I'm afraid, because your mouth is full. So God said, just eat and watch me work. Come out is that you can never let your light go out. Let me help you. God said He's a light unto your pathway. So that's why, but He's only a light when darkness is coming up against you. He don't need to be a light when you can see your way. He needs to be a light when you can't see your way. Oh, so now I said, Lord, I don't know how I'm gonna make it. He meant, Lord, I ain't got no money coming in. And Lord, my bills are due. He said, he's a light. He said, just walk towards the light. I don't know how I'm going to get there. Just keep walking towards the light. He meant, you got to understand. Take it up and say, find the light. The problem is, you're trying to see your way. But you just need to find the light. If you can just look at the light. See, the reason why he wants you to focus on the light, you can't see what's going on around you. You focus on the light. He knows it's dark. That's why he sent the light. Because if you can see how to get, you'll jump off the path. So I found a shortcut. That looks like a road over there. And you'll miss what God is trying to do. See, because every time God leads you, he's doing two things. Because God is a God of completion. He knows what's in you before you go through the trial. And he knows where he wants to take you before you get there. So you got to do two things. I want to bless you, but I can't bless you with what's in you. So while you get into the next stage of life, I'm taking out that anger that's in you. So when you get to the blessing. God always got something. See, he said, I do more than you can ask or think. So you just think God was going to bless you, but you didn't know that God was going to heal you on the process. Do more than what you asked for. I know you've been asking, Lord, I need this.